Sacred Heart Church on Victoria Cross where the last rites were administered to Michael. From here it was brought the short distance to Shanakiel Hospital where the wound was examined by a doctor. The body was then brought to Dublin by boat and transferred to St Vincent's Hospital. Nurses formed a guard of honour as Michael's body was taken from the hospital and brought to Dublin City Hall, where it lay in state for people to see. After lying in state, the body was brought to the Pro Cathedral, where a requiem mass was celebrated. After Mass, Free State soldiers brought the body from the Pro Cathedral and loaded it onto a gun carriage for its journey through Dublin to Glasnevin Cemetery. Ironically, the gun carriage was one used in the shelling of the forecourts by Free State troops. The legacy of Michael Collins is the, the free state government that emerged from his, uh, from his stand. Basically, the Irish free state survived because, largely because of Michael Collins' contribution. I think he would have been very disappointed with the way that I, the Irish people carried on uh, in, in particularly in recent years. Uh, that would have upset him terribly and that would have come from his own family background. Today is not the Ireland, or the Ireland of today is not the Ireland that he fought for or that he tried to uh, get freedom for. He would have been very disappointed. Here in Cork, uh, it's, his legacy is a little more complicated because a lot of people disagreed with him on this treaty the Anglo-Irish Treaty that was set up. But for young people, he should be an inspiration because he went out without much uh, prospects. He emigrated without really any money and he made himself uh, into a successful young businessman and then as a world leader. And as a very, at the very young age of 30 or 31, he was recognized internationally as an important person he was sitting down and doing business with the Prime Minister of England as a co-equal, not as somebody who was subordinate to him.